For our Outcome Measures project, we had the Activity-Specific Balance Confidence Scale, which is a patient self-reported measure, and the 10-meter walk test, which is a performance-based measure. We will go into further detail to describe both of these tests and their clinical importance. Our group members are Megan Ware, Rebecca Smith, Krista Brown, and Ian Carmichael. The first outcome measure that we will discuss is the Activity-Specific Balance Confidence Scale. The Activity Specific Balance Confidence Scale, also known as the ABC Scale, is a patient reported outcome that assesses their confidence in performing certain activities without a loss of balance. This can be used to create a plan or evaluate progress over time. This test can be done on individuals who are 18 and older. These individuals may have conditions such as MS, Parkinson's, brain injuries, or other balance deficits. It is also important for older adults and geriatric populations. The ABC scale measures balance and functional mobility, which falls under the activity and participation parts of the ICF domain. The test is given by paper and pencil and it is a survey of 16 items. Individuals will rate their own confidence in performing activities that require balance on a scale of 0 to 100. This test should take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes and there is no training required. However, permission must be obtained to administer the test if it is used in practice. This test is recommended to give face-to-face. The instructor should state for each of the following, please indicate your level of confidence in doing the activity without losing your balance or becoming unsteady by choosing one of the percentage points on the scale from 0 to 100%. The test is scored on a scale from 0 to 100%. 0 being no confidence, and 100 being complete confidence. To calculate the score, add the individual scores from each item and divide by 16. Individuals who use assistive devices should rate their balance while using those. For patients with MS, the sensitivity is 65% and the specificity is 77%. The test retest reliability is very high. Validity is similar to the Berg Balance Scale and Hauser Deambulation Index. There was no responsiveness established for MS. There should be no talking during the test and the test should be performed at least two times in order to track any changes or progress. To establish validity and consistency, this test should be performed yearly. Our next outcome measure is the 10 meter walk test. The 10 meter walk test is a performance-based outcome measure that assesses walking speed over a short distance. This test can be used as a screening tool for patients, for intervention planning, as well as evaluating change over time. The 10 meter walk test can be used to assess a wide range of ages, starting with those preschool aged two to five years, ranging all the way up to the elderly population, which includes those 65 plus. Some common medical diagnoses include brain injury, limb loss and impairment, as well as multiple sclerosis and others. This test can also be used to assess general decline in function as people age. This test can be used to assess functional mobility and gait as well as vestibular function. Under the International Classification of Function domain, it falls under activity and participation and body structure and function.
The 10 meter walk test is a fairly easy outcome measure to administer. It is freely accessible on the internet and there is little to no training required. It may take less than five minutes for an experienced or a new therapist to administer. You'll need a paper and pencil to record your results and you'll need a stopwatch to time your patient. You'll also need a clear pathway of 10 meters in order to walk with your patient. You need marks at the zero meter mark, the two meter mark, the eight meter mark, and the 10 meter mark. And you may need tape or a cone to mark those distances with, as well as a tape measure if you don't have pre-recorded distances. As mentioned in the previous slide, you will need at least 10 meters of solid flooring in order to perform this outcome measure. The therapist needs to mark the start and the end of the 10 meters, as well as place marks at the 2 meter mark and the 8 meter mark, which will be necessary to identify the central 6 meters of the test, which is timed. You may also want to have quiet conditions, which are favorable for test performance. The patient may get distracted easily and not perform as well on the outcome measure. The therapist should remain silent unless cues are necessary. Some general instructions that you'll want to know before performing this outcome measure, as well as instructions that you'll want to give your patient, are that there are a total of four trials completed during this measure. Two trials are performed at the patient's comfortable walking speed, as well as another two trials at the patient's fast walking speed. For comfortable walking speed, you should instruct your patient to walk at your own comfortable walking pace and stop when you've reached the far mark. For fast walking speed, you'll want to instruct the patient to walk as fast as you can safely walk and stop when you reach the far mark. Patients may use an assistive device or brace that they regularly use when performing activities. This, as well as any cues or assistance that you provide the patient, must be documented. The therapist administering the test should not walk in front of or directly beside the patient. This could result in pacing, which will affect the patient's walking speed and the overall outcome of this test. The therapist is recommended to walk at least one half a step behind the patient by the APTA neurologic section so as not to influence the patient but also to be able to safely assist the patient if they begin falling. Some specific instructions that the therapist will need to know for after they've instructed their patient on how to perform the outcome measure are that they should start their patient at the zero meter mark. Timing only begins, however, at the two meter mark. When any portion of the patient's lead foot crosses the two meter mark, you begin their time. Then you end the time when any portion of the patient's lead foot crosses the eight meter mark. The first two meters allows for an acceleration phase, and the last two meters allows for a deceleration phase. You document the time portion of the test in meters per second for each trial. There is a link in this slide for an example of the test performance. To note, PhysioU actually says that they do three repetitions for this test. All of our other sources stated that you should do two repetitions for each condition. While assistance provided during this test does not count against the patient's overall score, it must be documented. The therapist should only provide the minimum amount of assistance necessary for the patient to complete the test. However, the level of assistance that you document should be based on the maximum amount of assistance provided, which means that if you have to give them moderate assistance at any point during the test, even though for the rest of the test you provided minimal assistance, you have to document that you gave them moderate assistance. Assistance should only be provided to prevent a fall. You should not do anything that assists the patient in propelling forward. At the bottom of the slide, you will see a list of the one to seven scale of how to document levels of assistance. Scoring is based on the timed portion of this test, or the six central meters. While assistive devices and assistance and cues provided by the therapist are documented, they do not count towards the overall score for this measure. The score is documented in distance, 
covered in meters, divided by the amount of time it took to cover that distance in seconds. For the final scoring, the therapist will average the two trials at each condition separately. This slide includes normative data collected from healthy adult men by decade at both comfortable and fast walking speeds. A therapist may use this data in order to compare their patient's results to the results of a like population. Similar to the previous slide, this slide contains the same normative data for women. The test retest reliability for healthy adults at comfortable gait speed is R equals 0.75 to 0.95. Comfortable and fastest gait speed, ICC equals 0.93 to 0.91. Interrater reliability, ICC equals 0.980. First construct validity for healthy adults, correlation with the Berg balance scale is R equals 0.052. For correlation with the functional reach test, R equals 0 0.307. There are no currently documented responsiveness measures for this population. Although we have gone through most of the considerations throughout the PowerPoint presentation, a quick review would not hurt. The patient or therapist should not be talking during this test. For the patient, this may take away from their respiratory capacity as well as distract them, and if the therapist were to be talking to the patient during the test, it would be distracting. The patient may talk only in order to terminate the test due to various symptoms such as chest pain. If a patient has a goal to walk, and this goal may be reasonably achieved, but they cannot currently walk, the therapist may document the patient as having a baseline score of 0 meters per second. In order for the therapist to track pro progress, this test should be performed at least two times at evaluation and discharge, or however often the therapist sees fit. The neurologic section of the APTA has reviewed this measure and considers it one of their core measures. They also recommend that this protocol be reviewed yearly to establish consistency within and among the raters in a clinic.